আলহামদুলিল্লাহ রাব্বিল আলামিন আসসালাতু আসসালামু আলাইকুম রাসূলুল্লাহ আসসালামু আলাইকুম डियर पार्टिसिपेंट्स वेलकम टू द पोस्टर सेशन द सेशन विल एंड एट 6:00 एज यू नो सो वी विल स्टार्ट नाउ वी हैव टोटल 33 वीडियोस टू प्ले सो आई विल प्ले ऑल द वीडियोस वन बाय वन and uh, there will be a pause of 3 seconds between the videos and the, the video number will be shown the number is actually the uh, poster session number that is the id in the program and all the videos and the posters that we have received actually 41 posters though we have received 33 videos all these are uh, hosted in this site so if you go to the site you will be able to see this uh, the site uh, look like something this so with the title and the poster uh, uh, author's name there will be link the available videos and the posters if you click on the video it will open in the another tab so you can see the video also there so without delay let's play the videos assalamu alaikum this is mohammed mujammil haq phd student department of physics do it Kajapur. Welcome you all to my poster presentation, poster number two, titled Recent Pre Monsoon Thunderstorm Scenery over Bangladesh. Study is done to understand the frequency of pre monsoon thunderstorms over Bangladesh, which are locally known as Kalbushakis. It is found that the most severe thunderstorms took place in the month of May, whereas most of the moderate and light thunderstorms took place in the month of April. The highest incidence of thunderstorms occurred over Chitong region. And the next are Dhaka, Silet, Rangpur, Mohammed Singh, Kumilla, and Bogura region, respectively. It is found that the mean seasonal thunderstorm days are 33 during the study period. The main objective of the study is to identify the thunderstorm trend area and the probable time of occurrence of thunderstorms so that the government as well as the people become aware of it and take necessary steps. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum, I am Muhammad Barkudullah Papu, enrolling MSc in Physics Discipline, Kunla University. The title of my poster is Determination of Essential Elements in Medicinal Plants of the Sundarban Mango Forest by Newton Activation Analysis. The research work was performed at the Institute of Nuclear Science and Technology of Atomic Energy Research Establishment, Savar Dhaka, under the supervision of Dr. Muhammad Amirul Islam. We employed Newton Activation Analysis method to assess the essential elements present in two medicinal plant samples. The samples were irradiated in the rabbit irradiation facility of 3 MW Trigama 2 Research Director of Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission and gamma ray spectrometry of the irradiated samples was performed using high resolution HPG detector system at ANAA laboratory of BAEC. The experimental data shows that the concentrations of the elements are safe for human intake. No such toxic elements were found, rather some are very essential for human health. In most cases, the transfer factor value is below 1, which means elements are not being transferred from the rhizosphere soil to the plants. In future, with the assistance of the results of this study, the average daily intake of these plants by the local people and their health hazard quotient can be assessed. Thank you. My presentation the title of my presentation is recent track climatology of cyclonic disturbances over the bay of bengal we know that cyclonic disturbance when it form in the bay of bengal that time is very important for us track prediction is also very important when it makes landfall because it causes massive destruction damages and casualties the objective of my study is to construct tracks of tropical cyclone and to make its climatology over the bay of bengal in this study it has been used bmd and imd tropical cyclones of 1891 to 2020 data for track prediction arcgis software has been used to make climatology whose duration of last 30 years it has been found the track is straight towards west northwest and northeast towards among them some tracks are looping some tracks are semicircular some tracks are recurved and so on at last it has been said that this track uh, uh, climate music can be guided us for the uh, few of track prediction over the Bay of Bengal. Thank you so much to look for around of my first presentation. If any query, please don't hesitate to contact me. Welcome to my presentation. Here is my poster titled Surface Morphology of Calcium Drop Lithium Bisloth Iron Nibium Oxide Perovskite. I am in the sheet and following some my respective co-authors. We know that multi have more than one ferric order. 
and they have potential applications especially in screen printing devices on the other hand computer vision science deals for gaining high level information from digital images or videos which may be a great tools for surface morphology studies here is our objectives and here is the experimental methods i left on is the flow diagram of a sample preparation technique and right on is the flow chart of image processing algorithm now the results the xrd confirms crystalline structure Average grain size is 3.34 micrometer using linear linear intercept method, and here is the results of spectral analysis. In conclusions, our prepared samples are mainly perovskite. Grains are oil formed at 1000 degrees Celsius temperature, and permeability uh, decreases due to calcium doping. These are all in a nutshell. Thank you. Welcome to my channel. In this study, we use graphene oxide. Cobalt fine nanocomposite or synthesis and its structural magnetic and thermal stability of the first. Since graphene oxide and its composite have significant pore volume, high conductivity, this surface area and cobalt fine produces outstanding magnetic properties. Hence, the main focus of this research was to synthesis a finely tuned RgOCFN composite that can be used in oil product treatment. Materials and methods. RGO CFN composite was prepared in two routes, adding RGO and CF, CFN separately and incisive growth of CFN on graphene oxide. Both the routes are displayed in the following figures. Results and discussion. Structural characterization was done through XRD analysis, Raman analysis, and SCM analysis. The oxygen quantum function is characterized through FTR analysis. The stability of the composite was analyzed by uh, TVA and magnetic behavior was uh, examined through hysteresis loop. <coughs> XRD spectrum confirms the spinal structure of CFN. Many functional uh, groups are found in the FTR aspect of the composite. Soft magnetic Nation also found in the stress analysis. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, I am Tariq Hassan. Welcome to our poster on structural electrical and magnetic properties of cerium and iron code of strontium titanate. In this work, we try to show effect of cerium and iron co-doping on crystal structure, frequency dependent dielectric constant and magnet MH hysteresis loop of strontium titanate. XRD analysis show very little change on the structure with doping concentration and confirms our desired phase. Dielectric constant uh, increases with the con uh, cerium content concentration in single doped sample but eventually drops below uh, pure strontium titanate when iron is co-doped with cerium. Grain size is also reduced with doping concentration of cerium and iron. Magnetization and coercivity is heavily enhanced in this case due to introduction of iron which can find possible application in magnetoelectric devices. In this research work, we have investigated the nonlinear optical response of L-tryptophan aqueous solution with continuous wave diode laser of red color at the fluence range of 150 to 290 megawatt per meter square. Here we have modeled the nonlinear phase shift including linear and nonlinear absorption. The variation of phase shift with power and the experimental results are presented here. We finally conclude that in case of irradiation with continuous wave laser, the index of refraction is molded by the absorption of radiation by the material. The effect of absorption cannot be removed from close aperture data by normalization with open aperture data and the corresponding parameters like the absorption coefficient and the refraction coefficient can both be deduced by analyzing the variation of phase shift with incident power.
Due to high bandwidth capacity and low energy consumption, optical interconnects has become a promising technology for data transmission. We have designed a directional coupler realized with organic-inorganic hybrid polymer materials by using beam propagation method technique. The fabrication method includes photolithography technique, mosquito method, etc. The structural design is optimized and for the S-band structure, highest intensity and lowest loss is found at length 5,311 micrometer. The optimized length of straight segment is 2,290 micrometer. The coupling ratio at distance 29 micrometer between the two waveguides shows that the output power splits equally. So the directional coupler works as a splitter and its efficiency is 68%. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my presentation. I am Imran Shardar. My research study is synthesis and characterization of europium dope nickel zinc cobalt ferrite by conventional solid state reaction method. This sample can be a good candidate for potential applications in storage device, magnetic sensors, spin tuning device, etc. Here are some results of my experiments. Firstly, XRD, we showed a spinal cubic ferrite structure containing an additional peak due to europium ferrite. Porosity was found decreasing with europium. The extra density was found to have higher values than bulk density. Then same, the average grain size was found slightly increasing. FTA analysis confirmed the metal oxygen bonds in ferrite structure. It is noticed that sample exhibit high permeability at low frequency and initial permeability decreased with europium. The resistivity was found increasing with europium. The dielectric constant reduced with increasing europium content and minimum for x equals to 0 0.10. BSM was used to calculate MA slope at room temperature. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our poster, Facile Method for Synthesizing Zinc Oxide Nanorod with Controllable Size. Our aim is to develop a single step cheap method for the synthesis of zinc oxide nanorod. For that, we have used a microwave radiation. Microwave oven. The reaction vessel is placed slightly left position from the center, which is the high energy density position. Were varied to observe their effect on the size of the zinc oxide nanorods. Increases uh, with molar concentration at synthesis time, whereas the average diameter varies from 300 nanometer to 450 nanometer. Shows that all the diffraction patterns are well matched with the JCPTS database. UV spectra shows that the optical properties of the zinc oxide nanorod can be tuned by varying the size of the zinc oxide nanorod by varying the process parameters. Assalamu alaikum. I am Roshan Setara, MSc student, Department of Physics, WIT. Currently, I am doing research under the supervision of Dr. Muhammad Samir Ullah, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, WIT. We substitute chromium 3 plus ion in lithium zinc ferrite to emphasize the microstructure and electromagnetic properties as lithium zinc ferrite has versatile application in microwave and high frequency region. We prefer solid state reaction method by hand meaning sintered at 1100 degrees Celsius. The substitution of chromium can enhance the densification of lithium zinc ferrite resulting in easy magnetization process. It is found that chromium can tailor the plausible optimization of magnetic loss components. With the increase of resistivity, the AD current loss is decreased, which can modify the electrical properties. In addition, lithium chromium zinc ferrite can be improved the frequency stability nature in the complex magnetic permeability profile. The reduction of dielectric loss is also helpful to low loss electromagnetic devices. Assalamu alaikum. I am Rashid Nijam, working as an institute professor in the Department of Physics, University of Chittagong. Welcome to my talk. In particle accelerator, when the beam of projector is traveling to the target, it interacts with the interim materials and produces isotopes and secondary particles as shown in figure 1 along the beam path as shown in the figure 2. The secondary particles and isotope production can be modeled by JQMD, which has incorporated in Monte Carlo simulation could fits. The production cross section for secondary particles and isotopes can be calculated by using these two equations respectively. 
figure 3a and b shows the flux of different carbonyl groups as a function of energy those produces by the interaction with tantalum and aluminum respectively calculated by fields we consider the carbon 11 10 and 13 have the high frequency with sufficient energy to contaminate the measurement results as shown in the figure c these isotopes has insignificant difference in LT, so try detector like cf and cannot distinguish the isotopes and projectiles in this study we wanted to know how these isotopes can play the role during experimental measurement figure 4 shows the total charge changing cross section as a function of energy if we consider the production cross section of isotopes then the total charge changing cross section becomes higher as shown by the blue line then without considering the isotopes as shown by the red line so we can conclude that the contribution from the isotopes could be useful to explain the discrepancy in calculated and experimental results especially in the lower energy region thank you very much for your kind interest Investigation of molecular transport through multipore into giant unilamellar vesicle using console simulation. Recently, theoretical study investigated the molecular transport into the GUVs uh, through a single nanopore for the various size of fluorescent probes using artificially designed GUVs and nanopore on the membrane based on the experimental parameters. However, kinetics of molecular transport through multipore in the membrane of GUVs has not been clearly understood. So, in this simulation, we have designed a group of pores in the membrane of the GUVs uh, using computer aided software AutoCAD and perform simulation. So here we uh, used um, some fluorescent probes uh, such as uh, TRD3K, TRD10K and TRD40K. We can see that when the uh, probe size is increasing then the uh, red constant is uh, decreasing and also we can see that when the pore size is uh, increases then the red constant is increasing. So in all cases the fluorescent probes follow a single exponential decay function to transport the molecules from the inside to the outside of the GUV through the multi nanopores which uh, satisfy the experimental results. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to poster presentation. I am Tanvir Ahmed Choudhury, PhD researcher, Department of Physics, Jang Inogar University. In this research work, we try to synthesize zinc oxide nanoparticles from waste material. To conduct this research work, we took two waste material zinc dross and dry cell battery. Here is the synthesis of zinc oxide nanoparticles from dry cell battery. At first the zinc plate was separated from dry cell battery and washed the plate thoroughly to remove the surface contamination. After that the zinc plate was treated with concentrated hydrochloric acid. After that the solution was separated with the help of filter and in that solution we added sodium hydroxide in dropwise with constant stirring at 80 degrees celsius temperature we observed the ph whenever the ph reached at 12 we stopped adding sodium hydroxide and we also observed that the solution turned into milky white color we kept that solution for 12 hours and after that we got precipitation at the bottom of the beaker and finally we separated the precipitation and washed with distilled water for five times then we dried the precipitations for four hours at 80 degrees celsius temperature and finally got zinc oxide nanoparticles here is the xrd result of our synthesis zinc oxide nanoparticles where we can see the almost similar diffraction peaks as the original zinc oxide nanoparticles thank you assalamu alaikum i am muhammad ifat al Karim, physics discipline khulna university the topic of this research work is graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide reinforced hydroxyapatite based nanocomposites for biomedical application we have successfully synthesized graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide, hydroxyapatite, graphene oxide hydroxyapatite composites and reduced graphene oxide hydroxyapatite composites. XRD successfully predicted that the introduction of graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide did not disturb the crystalline structure of hydroxyapatite. Successful formation of composites were confirmed by chemical analysis of FTIR and morphological analysis of FECM. EDX showed that the calcium to phosphorus ratio is near 1.67, which is very useful for bone and teeth. Raman and UV visible spectra showed that the bond strength of graphene oxide hydroxyapatite composites were greater than reduced graphene oxide hydroxyapatite composites. So, graphene oxide hydroxyapatite composites will be more useful in biomedical applications than reduced graphene oxide hydroxyapatite composites. This research was funded by NST fellowship and lab and characterization supports were provided by Atomic Energy Center Dhaka and BCSI Dhaka. Thank you very much. Hmm. 
I am Muhammad Faisal Mahmud from Department of Physics, City University of Engineering Technology, and this is my uh, poster, who is entitled as uh, Structural Electrical and Magnetic Properties in Spectrum for Rare Earth Substituted Magnetic Gen Ceramics Synthesis from Nanoferrites. Uh, we basically prepare gen ceramics due to the fact that uh, powder samples are not uh, applicable in many electronic applications, uh, and um, we have to solve a lot of synthesis technique for or our uh, the nano crystal phase synthesis uh, we have choose uh, this because it has a wide range of application uh, advantages uh, than others uh, synthesis process that detailed procedure can be is seen here we first synthesis our nano crystal phase uh, then using those powders so we have uh, prepared our dense synthesis and then used uh, for several characterization techniques uh, such as xrd impedance analyzer and have simple magnetometer or gsm and uh, the, these are the results of our uh, synthesis samples, so which uh, includes the uh, three parts structural analysis, electrical analysis, and magnetic analysis. Uh, now, move towards the structural analysis. This is the XRT spectra in which we can see that our peak switch towards the left, which is indicating the this machine has been uh, in. Increased by the substitution of lanthanum, and this is the reveal re 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 fitted plot. Uh, we, we, and we have found chi value less than two, which means that our fitting process too good. After getting uh, optimum results in different different process, we have formed our crystal structure. These are the three crystal structure of our synthesized samples, uh, and then and we have analyzed our uh, data for uh, maximum entropy map, uh, and this is basically demonstrating the electron density distribution amongst our samples. Poles uh, um, after uh, and this is uh, the uh, structural analysis for our sample. Then we move towards our, our electrical analysis. This is the dielectric constant curve for our samples, and this is uh, uh, the, the curve after fitted to non modified device equation. And we have seen the uh, theoretical data is fitted so well with uh, experimental data. And after the, from this fitting process, we have found that our uh, dielectric nature is non divide type and uh, then comes to our magnetic analysis. This is the um, magnetic storage curve, and this is the magnetic loss, and this is the dielectric loss tangent and um, the magnetic quality factor curve. From this uh, uh, gra uh, graphs, we can see that uh, our um, uh, synthesis sample can be used up to this frequency limit because uh, all of these uh, magnetic curves are are showing the uh, other. I have good agreements with this limit uh, with this limit um, and uh, from this analysis we can conclude that uh, our uh, synthesis sample can be used for multifunctional uh, applications uh, of uh, in electronic devices and uh, so oh, our research gets uh, some uh, exciting results In this work, we have done a molecular dynamic simulation to investigate the formation of aluminum nanocluster in the pulse laser ablation technique using DXFI potential. When an intense laser beam pulses on a metal surface, it produces metal plasma at a large temperature. The initial configuration of our simulation is designed at 5000 Kelvin temperature when aluminum is surrounded by water molecules at a plasma state. Here, the work's motive is to observe the changes when the system reached a room temperature from 5000 Kelvin and one nanocluster of aluminum was found. Greetings everyone, in this investigation we have synthesized the cesium tin chloride perovskite nanocrystals via the hot injection method and investigated its optical and photocatalytic properties. We have synthesized the cesium tin chloride perovskite nanocrystals via the hot injection method using the stoichiometric amount of the constituent chemicals. From the experimental investigation, we confirmed that the crystal is cubic with a space group of P and 3M and has higher thermal stability with superior surface morphology. The perovskite nanocrystals had surface purity confirmed by the XPS spectra and has higher absorption at the visible range. The band gap is 2.98 electron volt and bandage positions supported the photocatalytic capability which we investigated later and found highest 58% efficiency under UV visible light irradiation towards the degradation of rhodamine B dye.
Welcome everybody. The title of my uh, topic is the study of the structural and magnetic properties of gadolinium web covalent nanoparticles in the solid solvent roots. I'm a solvent in the solid nanoparticles in this story. Catalyst for seven T microbe that have this nanometer size particle form for seven. SAD button nuclear ring shape, the crystal and natural confirm correct. XRD button, I'm a detail is a cubic spiral structure of gadolinium web covalent. Formation occurred. Among magnetic properties, a history is looked at the capacity of the paramagnetic properties of the seven, particularly point zero three percent doping and catre, magnetic saturation, magnetization, bears at the cation distribution in the octahedral and tetrahedral side, a poor coercivity, bears at the in current of the anisotropy comes from the strong spin orbit coupling of gallium ions. Apologies, the other. Gadolinium doping barata taki shikhatre, coercivity gomita se. This is because of thermal effect and reduction of particle size. Thank you very much. Here, the research article is impact of particle size on the magnetic properties of highly crystalline iterbium substituted nickel zinc nanoferrets. At first, the Samples are made by Solzel auto combustion technique. After preparing the samples, characterization are done by using these tools. Structural properties by XIT, ETS, and FTIR. Microstructure by FASA. Magnetic properties by PPMS. Particle size by TLS. PE loop by multiferric test system. It is very important to find the critical particle size of the composition. Here, the critical particle size is 6.4 nanometer, which is the transition point from single domain to multi domain. Permeability increases with frequency up to a certain frequency, then it decreases to 120 megahertz, which was successfully explained by dominant spin rotation mechanism. Digitive quality factor is maximum for x equal to 0 and does not show complete peak because the frequency is out of our instrument. The compositions remain very magnetic order up to cooling temperature, indicating the samples are used to high temperature devices. High frequency peak of relative quality factor indicating the compositions are suitable for high frequency applications. Welcome to my first presentation, Misha Kamal Amir. Uh, I am the lecturer in physics in the University of Creative Technology Chittagong. I am going to present the first presentation. This is my field and PhD research work. The title of my first presentation is Dialectic Modulus, Impedance, Spectropy and Conductivity, Properties of Magnesium Substituted Copper Zinc Aluminium Nanoparticles with uh, Structural Radical Department. The present study is in magnetic from uh, magnesium, copper, zinc, aluminium, magnetic nanoparticles. So at first, I would like to say something about ferrites. Ferrite nanoparticles are the most explored magnetic particles with remarkable magnetic electric properties up to date, uh, up to date which are composed of various oxides with the iron CX as the main constituent. There are types of uh, there are types of uh, materials. Uh, the research work is on uh, this research work is a mixed uh, spinal soft ferrite. There are two types of ferrite. One is hot and soft ferrite. So these uh, major areas are the magnetic nanoparticles of friction material and biomedical. The character is a high electrical resistivity of the reduction of the current losses. Why we use the magnetic current uh, so, the lightly is magnetic and high electric resistivity and stand mechanical statement and reduce high uh, dielectric and eddy current losses. Now, um, the, now the uh, discussion I will discuss on the uh, synthesis of raw materials. Nitrate of raw materials, working, mixing of ethanol, PSP, maintains a seven by ammonium mixer, sole gel, dry gel, conduction, propolis powder. Annual at 700 degrees centigrade for 500 uh, 5 hours, blending and uh, magnesium, copper, zinc, and magnesium nanoparticles. Now, the uh, objective of the nanoparticles is the factors of crystal structure, radical analysis, electric and dielectric properties, and this is the modulus and energy current type conductivity. The, this is the relevant discussion. Now, the first one is the phase analysis, uh, XRT patterns of all composition of the magnesium at 700 degrees, the composition have single phase. This is the read belt analysis shows that the phase in the cubic crystal system, the goodness of the fit is chi square is always less than two. The next one is the dialectic. Dialectic as soon as the figure the real part and imaginary part of the dielectric activity for the usual dielectric dispersion in the lower frequency the region 20 hertz to 10 kilohertz and decrease very slowly up to frequency of 10 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. 
Next one is the dielectric loss tangent. Dielectric loss tangent has been found that decrease with increase in frequency the peak appears when the frequency of the hopping charge carrier coincides with the frequency of the applied and dynamic field. The lower very low dielectric is the sample of x is equal to 0 0.01. The position of the peak shifted to the higher frequency side with the addition of memory so to increase the relaxation time decreases. Dielectric modulus. Uh, the, this uh, it shows the variation of real and imaginary part of the dielectric is very low at end prime. After a certain time, frequency shows the saturation magnet which individual release of the switch charge polarization, saturation magnetization. Here, the peak indicates the separation long range to short range open mechanism due to the pressure. Next one is the full full plot of the uh, uh, modulus and prime versus and prime a uh, classical semicircle pattern with no overlapping of peak which suggests non debate type of UPR including the spectra peak. There is the x is equal to 0.40 is the lowest conductivity of the current is full full plot full full plot of the MPD and the full full plot completed of the two overlapping semicircle first semicircle at lower frequency shows the resistance of the gain boundary second semicircle at the higher frequency shows the resistance of gain. There are two semicircles in this year. The AC conductivity, uh, Jamsar explained this type of conductivity. AC conductivity, two technical reasons due to the different conduction. First one is the lower frequency region, uh, higher conductivity shows increase in the nature of the frequency. Second one is the higher frequency region, higher conductivity becomes proportional to the frequency and increase. Uh, increase again uh, with increase in frequency. Last, uh, now only conclusion. conclusion and nanoparticles of magnesium substituted copper, zinc, aluminium have been successfully synthesized by solid the technique the single phase cubic is going to all of the sample of magnesium MGX, copper 0 0.65, magnesium like zinc 0 0.35, FU 1.925, aluminium 0.07, 504. 700 degrees centigrade are confirmed by XRT. The equal analysis also complete the value of the dielectric constant is uh, remarkable low, uh, low the modulus of the spectrum uh, established the possibility of hoping mechanism. The full full flow shows the main gain and gain dominant condition both are in case both are increased. Uh, last one the short processing time to full formation homogeneity well crystalline and crystalline RFC of the present disease. Thank you everybody. We present fabrication and characterization of metallic nanoparticles using pulse laser ablation technique. Here, higher energy laser beam is focused upon three kinds of magnetic materials. The laser evaporates the metal, forming nanoparticles. The objective is to prepare nanoparticles of three kinds of magnetic materials, iron, copper, and aluminium, and then optical characterization of these samples and band gap measurement via UV spectrum. We found that different ablation time does not affect the band gap and absorption peak of same kind of material, but for different kind of materials, the copper has the higher absorption peak and the aluminium has the lower absorption peak. From Tauk's relation, we can calculate the direct and indirect band gap of this prepared sample from UV spectrum, and as we can see that the direct band gap of aluminium is higher than iron and copper. Similarly, the indirect band gap of aluminium is also higher than iron and copper, and our band gap results were compared with some other research works. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Muhammad Abdul Malik. Assistant Professor of Physics Discipline, Kulna University, is going to present on topic effects of atomic number and pressure of different filling gases on soft X-ray yield from PF1000 device. We used modified version of Lee model code to study the effects of atomic number and pressure for different gases on soft X-ray yield from PF1000 device. In these numerical experiments, we used hydrogen, deuterium, tritium, helium, nitrogen, oxygen, and argon gases. The operating pressure range was 0.1 torr to 4 torr. Optimum pressure at which soft X-ray becomes maximum is obtained through numerical experiments for each gas. And the results are presented in the table. From figure one, it confirmed that the heavier gas produces maximum soft X-ray yield at low pressure compared to other lighter gases. We see that the soft X-ray increases with increasing the atomic number that is shown by figure two. Because soft X-ray is directly proportional to atomic number denoted by equation one. The conclusion of the present numerical study is that the in the case of soft X-ray production from PF1000, operating pressure for particular gas would be adjusted carefully so that the maximum emission of soft X-ray is obtained. Thank you.
Assalamu alaikum. I am Muhammad Hamid Islam presenting my research theme Data Hiding Using Audio Stereography Considering Less Distortion of Cover Data for Nuclear Data. When we consider secure digital data transmission, security becomes very crucial matter. Our approach to our technique, audio stereography, ensures private, secure, invisible, and avoiding malicious communication. In this experiment, we have proposed modified LSB algorithm for audio stereography. Generally, LSB algorithm replaces the least significant bit of the cover file to hide the nuclear data. Um, our modified algorithm, the position for the insertion inside the sample of carrier audio has to be selected based on the decimal value of the first three most significant bit. Then one bit of the secret message has to be inserted at the fourth position of the carrier audio file. This algorithm provides a high accuracy result in terms of impossibility, capacity, robustness, and data hiding rate. Our proposed method successfully achieved the research objective. Thank you. Welcome to our poster DFT based first principle calculation of lead free CGM tin chloride peroxide, a GGA plus U approach. Our theoretical calculations carried out using CASTEF code in material studio. We used 600 electron volt cut of energy and 15 cross 15 cross 15 high symmetry point are used for all calculations. We observe that higher absorbance in the visible region for UV equal to 6 electron volt. The optical band gap is 2.7 electron volt, which is 90% accuracy with the experimental result. The density of states indicate tin 5p and chlorine 3p orbital make balance band and conduction band make for tin 5p and cesium 6s orbital. The ratio of effective mass of hole and effective mass of electron mass larger or smaller than 1 may be indicate highly photocatalytic and this value for our sample is 0.25 which indicate cesium tin chloride have photocatalytic performance from the electron charge density map we observe that tin chloride sigma type covalent bond presence in cesium tin chloride hello everyone my name is marjano monira let us introduce our work through this poster presentation we have designed our poster on the investigation of structural, electronic, elastic, and optical properties of the perovskite structure A cuprate, where A refers to large cation and here calcium as well as strontium belongs to A, and the compounds are calcium cuprate and strontium cuprate. Our process is find out the importance of this compound as perovskite structure and remark the application of them in the key sectors including dielectrics, photovoltaics, substructs for superconducting materials and optoelectronics. It's Nurul Hizalikar. Welcome to my postcard presentation. The title of my presentation is Realization of the Role of Donor Impurity on the Electronic Structure and Optical Properties of Zinc Oxide, a first principle study. In this calculation, we use CGA PD functional with ultra pseudo potential to optimize the crystal structure. The optical electronic band structure reveals that both zinc oxide and fluorine of zinc oxide are direct band gap semiconductor and the band gap increases due to the fluorine doping. This happened due to the well-known Badestein MOS effect. It is also seen that the impurity state are introduced below the conduction band and the Fermi level entered into the conduction band. Hence, fluorine of zinc oxide shows n-type conductivity and the conductivity increases with increasing fluorine concentration. The absorption spectra confirm that the blue ship occur at the absorption edge and hence the optical band gap increase due to the fluorine doping. Therefore, the fluorine doping oxide will be a good candidate for the optoelectronic device application. Thank you. Everyone, in this work, we are going to show a computational molecular design structure for donor acceptor type thermally activated electrofluorescence OLED, which exhibit low singular triplet energy. When connected with anode and cathode, this electron hole precombination creates energetic state called exciton, which naturally comes in two varieties, 25% for singlet and 75% for triplet. 
For a 100% internal quantum efficiency, we need a small singlet triplet energy gap which can be achieved by decreasing the overlap between frontier orbitals that is HOMO and LUMO. So we separated electron donating and withdrawing groups by linker and thus HOMO and LUMO are estimated to be separated on donor and acceptor as shown in optimal structure. UV visible absorption spectra shows that singlet and triplet transitions are energetically close, proving a small singlet triplet energy split. Finally, we got delta EST of only 0.14 volt. Therefore, we expect reverse intersystem crossing to take place for a highly efficient luminescence. So, this is the title of the poster. Cosmic radiation has been identified as a severe health risk to the astronauts on long-term space missions. As countermeasure, active and passive shielding methods are available. For making active shields, superconducting systems are most promising. In this poster, at first we have reviewed the previous works on superconducting magnetic shield. After that, we have presented the characterization of the multi-wall carbon nanotube added yttrium barium copper oxide superconductor. After that, we have illustrated our proposed shield. Theoretically, this toroidal shield can deflect the lighter particles up to 2400 mega electron volt. And for heavier particles, this cutoff energy is 873 mega electron volt. Effectiveness of this shield in a specific energy range and some specific limitations has also been discussed. So that's all from our poster. Thank you for the chance. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Mahu Bakari. Welcome to this poster entitled Strategy of Improving Photovoltaic and Efficiency of Iron 2 Sulfide Based Heterojunction Solar Cell True Absorber Buffer and Window Layer Optimization with SCA PS One Dimensional Software. Among 23 exciting photovoltaic materials, including silicon and other new materials, we construct an efficient heterojunction using iron pyrites and molybdenum disulfide to enhance optical absorption to create an efficient solar module of high performance. The current voltage characteristics and photoconversion efficiency with short circuit current density and open circuit voltage of optimized structure was carried out by SCA PS One Dimensional Software. From the data analysis and optimized cell parameters, we can find the efficiency of the solar cell is 36.6%. Here we can see from the figure 1, 2, and 3, and there are sub-figures. The cell performance is greatly affected by thickness of these layer alignments, series and shunt resistance with operating temperature, short circuit current, and open circuit voltage. From the data analysis, we have found that the efficiency increased efficiently to 36.6% from the implementation of molybdenum disulfide of thickness 0.8 micrometer and iron pyrite of thickness 1.4 micrometer. The title of my project is Optical and Structural Properties of Spin Coated CNTS Thin Film Effect of Thyroid Concentration. We prepared our CNTS Thin Film with the variation of concentration of thyroid, say 6 molar, 8 molar, 10 molar, and 12 molar, where the concentration of proper chloride, nickel chloride, and tin chloride were fixed. After our investigation, we find that the absorbance and absorption coefficient for CNTS 12 m Thin Film is higher than the other 3, thin, three thin films. Again, the transmittance and band gap is lower for CNTS 12 m thin film than the other three thin films. Again, we also observe that the crystalline quality is better for CNTS 12 m thin film than the other thin films. And the crystalline nature is a simple cubic structure in nature. So, comparing the four CNTS thin films, we can conclude that CNTS 12 m thin film is more better for solar cell applications than the other three. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Abul Monson Mahmoud Musa. Our topic is the structural, morphological and optical properties of copper acid thin film synthesized by deep coating technique for gas sensing applications. Copper acid thin films have been deposited onto clean glass substrate by salt gel deep coating technique with different wood dollar speed at molar concentration 0.3 mole. Our main objective is to in investigate the gas sensing response of this thin film and the precursor concentration is copper acid monohydrate. Here the resultant discussion we have two prominent peak from XRD analysis which is minus 111 and 111 and Roman analysis also confirm this is copper acid thin film. And we have higher crystalline size and higher green size with the lower dual speed and which is 0.70 mm per second and the higher crystalline size is 21.83 and the higher green size is 204 plus minus 65 nanometer. And higher gas sensing response is found when the flame thickness is high and which is 34 percent and which is found for 10,000 ppm of carbon dioxide vapor in the air. Thank you.
myself Marjuk Ahmed from Biophysics Research Laboratory, Department of Physics, Buet. Giant unilamellar vesicles (GUVs) are mimic of biological cells. Purification of GUVs is necessary to remove lipid aggregates and smaller vesicles. Hence, GUVs can be used in various research such as cancer cell destruction experiments, drug delivery, interaction with nanoparticles, and peptides. We have analyzed the purification of charged GUVs in a physiological buffer and found two key parameters. Those are gamma and eta. The parameters gamma and eta were determined experimentally, which were useful for analysis of purification of GUVs and also for estimation of average size of purified vesicles without doing experiments. These investigations would help to understand the purification process of the vesicles as well as the biomembranes of cells. Thank you.